Good morning, folks. 24 hours with no big flashes and 131 angstroms means only one thing. The sun is quiet. We've got some minor C flares, but nothing significant, and the sunspots are about to solidify that trend. Apart from potential departing shots once it gets out of Earth's range, these boys are ready to call it a day. It's the filaments that are about to take over. We've got some departing on the disk, both north and south. These are destabilizing already. But we also have some that are incoming and have yet to face Earth. The incoming filaments become primary eruption threats within 36 hours twins in coming down there. I usually show 24 or 72 hours of solar wind, but it's just the last six hours this morning, so you can see how sharply the speed and density of the solar wind jolted upward. No magnetic disruptions at Earth just yet, as the stream is just now impacting, but with that, and coronal hole streams expected to impact tonight or tomorrow, we'll need to be on watch for stronger streams. The best news of the day is that despite retaining its force, these corona holes produce no more big quakes. In fact, it was a bit of a downgrade fest as now all three big ones from yesterday are ranked lower over at USGS. If you happen to check out lists yesterday, you also noted that those big ones were global ringers, Australia to Texas to Spain to South Africa, all showing the effects. Got a nuclear plant undergoing inspection and repairs after radioactive tritium was found to have leaked from pipes last month. Officials claim cleanup will go smoothly and there's no danger to the public. Other top RSOE story is 10 dead in Central Africa after torrential rains caused a landslide. Not built to withstand that. Down below you've got links to a great article on how magnetic fields affect stellar formation, assuming you can forgive the outdated terminology. Also got links to a lightning frequency map of Earth. Yet another paper showing the energy balance on Earth is trending downward, and while we all know Antarctica is at record high ice, this article details how the Arctic is actually not down at its record lows, still very much recovered from some previous years. This typhoon is one heck of a system. It's maintained up through the 250 HPA layer, which I've never seen before. Penumbral cloud breaks visible, too. Guam just taking a few outer bands of rain, but Yap appears on deck for a major landfall, followed by the Philippines. In the United States and Canada, we've got a Pacific flow to the border at the west, a low that will settle into northern Pennsylvania later today, and one that will develop south on its convergence line in Texas and Oklahoma. Tonight's alerts hit those three zones with heavy snowfall possible in the two northern lows mentioned with a return of severe alerts south-central tonight. Eyes open there. In Europe, you can spot that low settled in right there between the land, wrapping around it as the convergence drawn in from the sea only to crash into that same flow coming out of the east. The path of the Atlantic flow is where the clouds, moisture, and storms could happen tonight. Flood warnings as well in those prone areas. High pressure blocking the clouds here, but pushing them outward along the flow onto eastern Australia. While those convergence lines are still active out to the west as well, and it's those two zones opposite sides of Australia getting the brunt of it tonight. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.